everybody. This is Suzanne Spooner, QHHT Level 3 Practitioner in Des Moines, Iowa. And I have a really unique session to share with you today. This is so much fun. So this gal, her name is Diana Dunbar, and she is a amazing person. She is uh, an intuitive, a life coach, and she's an experiencer. She hosts a group of experiencers. I'll put all of her information down below. And she and I originally had our first session together under a very unique situation where I was a speaker at the Secret Space Conference. And there was a group from the Netherlands that was filming there at the Space Conference. And they wanted to film me giving Diana a session because she had a lot of interesting experiences, some very interesting missing time and um, so we had a, a session, but it was with lights and and filming and lots of people in the room. So a very um, non-traditional session. And I had shared with her that if she wanted to do a more regular one-on-one -on -one session, that I'd be happy to do that down the road. So we recently got together and did that. Um, however, besides starting off with exploring some missing time that she had, which will blow your mind away, we did something very unique. She is, as I said, an intuitive. And one of the things that she's always wanted to do is answer other people's questions um, from the place where she wouldn't know what that question was or you know, wouldn't have been thinking on it. Um, she just wanted to see if she could get good information that way. So what we did was ask members of a private Facebook group I have. Um, I'll put a link to that group down below as well. If they had questions that they would like her high self or the collective or whomever decided to come through to answer. And we got a huge list of questions. We got through, I think, almost every single one of them. It was amazing. So this session starts off with me asking um, and taking her back to some missing time in this life that she has that she wanted to have some clarity about. And then we progress until we're um, asking the group's questions. So a few of her own personal questions and then the group's questions. So that's what I have for you today. This is kind of a unique situation um, that we hope that you enjoy it. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do. And that's, I think, all I've got for you. I think, I don't know why we call this one, missing time and Q&A probably. Q&A, yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I have a cold right now, so I'm a little groggy and a little um, froggy in the throat. And um, But we'll get it all squared away. We'll get it um, up and out to you guys. And I hope you enjoy it. And thanks to Diana for sharing this unique experience with you. All right. You can find me at SuzanneSpooner.com. See you guys soon. Bye. I'm back in my old apartment in the bed where I was taking the nap. And so you are back in time in mm -hmm. that apartment. And what's around you? I'm sitting on the bed and the nightstand is next to me with my lamp. It's daylight. I think I'm just getting ready to lay down and take the nap. And what else do you notice around you? I can see the sun coming in through the window. And I'm sleepy, so I'm going to lay down and take a nap. Now you can be aware of everything that's going on around you, even as you drift off to sleep. What comes to mind? What do you notice as you're getting into that nice sleepy state in that nap? I can feel myself getting sucked up. Okay. And tell me all about that experience of getting sucked up. I guess I've never been consciously aware, but right now I feel myself being pulled up. And it's like a, like a reverse pressure going upward and I can feel pressure in my head. And 
a, a pulling from like where my heart chakra is. Just a lot of pressure around my head. Are you aware of what's going around you visually? No, it just seems really bright. Hmm. And what happens next? I still just feel a, a pulling up, 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 up. And it's like a, it's a floating and a pulling. I just see a lot of white and gray. Like a light gray or a dark gray? A light gray. It just feels very, very disembodied. And how are you with that? I don't feel like scared or alarmed. There, for some reason right now, I'm like seeing like a, man a mantis being. Okay, and describe that mantis being for me the best that you can. Um, a very strangely calm energy, like a light green, um, very large, um, definitely not verbal. Definitely would only be telepathic. Okay. Do you or he exchange thoughts telepathically? I can't quite tell. Like, there's definitely other beings that it's communicating with. Okay, so it's not just you and that mantis being? No, no. I think I'm on a table now. Okay. And describe what you notice around you. There are, I think, like little grays, like the little ones that would be maybe like four feet tall and just like little workers. Are there others there besides the little grays? I think so. They're just, they're busy. Like, I don't know if the mantis being is instructing them. It just feels like there's a lot of movement happening around me, like bus busy, fast movement. Okay. I don't feel fear. It's more just curiosity because I don't, nobody's verbally said anything to me. There's just a lot of movement. Um, but I'm, I'm calm. It feels very comfortable and not soothing would not be the right word. The only thing I'm noticing is just a lot of pressure in my head. There, the room seems to be round. It feels like there's some sort of screen or something off to the right hand side and it feels like there would be a door or something by where my head is but like probably 10 or 15 feet away like oh. I'm definitely in the center of a room and the the walls are like a, a whitish gray and it it's so interesting. It just, there's like no specific source of light. Oh, it's just light. So you're there, there's activity around you and you have the pressure in your head. You get a sense of what's causing that pressure. It, it's like on the, like the top of the crown of my head, like where the crown chakra would be and it's almost like there's something holding me down, but it would be something energetic, not a physical, not like something that, like a metal clamp or anything. It would be something energetic holding my head um, very still. Okay. I wonder if you were to step 
kind of outside of your physical body so that you could take a look all the way around, what would you notice then that you can't see when you're laying down like that? It's confusing because my mind is trying to, to pull at those medical noises and that experience that my brain knows it remembers and it's, it's, it's almost like creating static and fuzz where it's like blinking in and out. Oh, interesting. Because that place where I just was is very calm and serene and there I don't see any or doesn't feel like there are any humans there. In that room or? Yeah, in the room where I feel like I'm on that table. This It feels very much like just a mantis being in the grays and not this is so it's weird it just felt like somebody tapped my hand too okay um okay i'm gonna try and just settle back down into And so what happens next while you're there? It looks like there's some sort of communication happening on the screen. There is a human there. Oh, tell me about that human. Um, it's a man with brown hair. Um, is he on the screen or by the screen? No, he's on the screen. And I... He's talking, but I don't necessarily hear what he's saying. He's, I can tell he's either checking on something or communicating something to the mantis being because the, the little grays are just, it's like they're little robots. They're not really interacting other than what the, the mantis being is telling them. So the man, the human on the screen is interacting with the mantis being, mm -hmm. and then what happens? And then that's where, now I feel like he moves up to my head and he puts his, I don't know if you want, it wouldn't be hands, but he puts those on my head. And how does that feel when he does that? It's just like a really big increase of pressure. There. It's like whatever he is doing is energetically manipulating something. Everything that they're using is like an energetic tool. And do you get a sense of what they're manipulating or why? I just asked him what he's doing and he said to help you. And help you how, ask him. To reorient the structure. Oh, nice. Structure of what? Your brain alignment and your DNA alignment. Okay. And how will the restructuring of your brain alignment and your DNA alignment 
shift or change things for you? Allowing you to be more multidimensionally aware. Hmm. Do you think I could ask him questions directly? If you st yeah, let okay. me try. Okay, and so her brain and DNA alignment will allow her to be what again? To have more multidimensional access. Oh, nice. And what will that be like for her? Disorienting. Oh. We, are you wanting her to be disoriented, or is there a way for her to acclimate to that? That'll happen over time. Okay. And when it does happen, what will she notice differently? Higher states of consciousness. Okay. And why is it important that you guys are working on her at that time to give her that? To adjust and correct the invasive technology that was put there that caused original misalignment. Oh, and why did that happen? That was government interference from Earth fractions. Okay. Earth factions. So that wasn't in your or her plan to have happen, but it did? Correct. No, we're part of her soul family. Oh, tell us your connection to her as much as you can, please. Um, we are part of a star system that has been aware of the plight of Earth for an extended period of time. And so she is one of the many volunteers that came to help with the restructuring and realignment of the fractured grids that surround your planet. Oh, nice. Okay. And what star system do you come from? Alora. Aloran. Okay. Beautiful. And is she aware of that? No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and so to work with the energy grids around Earth? Uh, yes, she is, she is one of many that holds a frequency that helps keep us more tapped into what is happening on the planet. And by her having this higher connectivity, it allows us to better gauge the frequency adjustment that is taking place on the planet. Okay. And from your perspective, how is that all going? According to our expectations. Oh, good. Okay. So things are on track? From a human perspective, what on track looks like is very different from what our perspective, but things are progressing as we expected and have multi-dimensionally multi viewed and planned for. Okay, so okay, so even if there's hiccups, you're planning for that, it sounds like. Yes, because nothing, time does not move in a linear fashion, it moves outward. Oh. And so we view things and plan for things in a different way than the human capacity can see. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you see time? We find that interesting, we'd love to learn. The flow of time is a quantum structure that is simply a perception of the human mind as you experience your three-dimensional surroundings. And when you are in a higher state of consciousness, your ability to navigate the energetic structure that you perceive as time is perceived in a more expansive state that does not have a single linear point of des a, a, a destination so much as a starburst outward from a singularity point. And so our ability to navigate through the density of time is experienced very differently than the singularity perception of your 
linear time. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for that. So the way she perceives you in this experience again is how? For as my mantid form? Mm -hmm. I don't understand the question. So to her, you are a mantis being? Yes. Okay. And is that the form that you are in or is that her perception of you? No, that is my form. Okay. And tell us a little bit about you and what your role is um, specifically. I'm a scientist and a teacher. I help make sure that the volunteers that are on the planet are being cared for in the way that is necessary in their human form. Bringing in higher dimensional beings into physicality can be very jarring. And so with the interference that is caused by those fractions that wish to interfere with our way of adjusting the timelines and the correcting the earth frequencies through utilizing the what you what do you call it you're you are a free will planet and so we have to have our volunteers incarnate into this structure and I have forgotten the rest of what your question was. I think I did too. I was <laughs> paying attention. Oh, about you, your, your, your oh, role. Pur purpose. Yes. <laughs> so I am simply here to readjust when things are put into a state that is no longer in alignment. Okay. So I am here to watch the data and the information and you would call statistics, but there is a far more multi-dimensional aspect to this. Perfect. Is there a name that she can refer to you as? Asa. And say that one more time. Asa. Asa. Okay. Thank you, Asa. We appreciate that very much. She mentioned that there was a human um, man with brown hair on the screen communicating with you. Can you share more about him? He is... Someone we don't talk about. Oh, <laughs> well, okay. And why don't you talk about him? I wonder. He, oh, he, he is not part of our soul group. He is, okay, I'm going to talk as me. It, it seems like it's there. They have an alliance with this person mm -hmm. and he doesn't particularly well, it's interesting connecting to him. He doesn't really have the emotions that we have, but if he could have dislike, he wouldn't really No, that's not correct. There is a disharmony of frequency with this person. He is, he is part of earth fraction factions. Okay. He's part of earth factions. And, um, we're gonna let you just kind of go back in there. So we can talk with Asha again. Um, so why is he involved in this um, um, experience for her while she's on the table, I wonder? The man who came on the screen? Yes. Uh, he is just checking on the status of the, you would call abduction. Okay. And um, is he someone that you trust, Asha, in this experience? Mm, yes. Is he always involved with her abductions or is... No, he is maintenance for the ship. Maintenance. Oh. Or more of people who would be involved in navigate, navigation. Navigation of what specifically? Of our ship. Of your ship. Okay. Okay. And your work is a scientist and teacher. Correct. What do you like to teach about? Uh, it is other higher dimensional beings learning how to do the statistical analysis and adjustments. So I do, I teach what I do. 
you teach what you do. Okay, that's so cool. And your students are, are whom exactly? Other mantis beings, younger individuals, and uh, those of other higher densities that are look more humanoid um, because of the amount of energy going through me, I can already feel like I have to use the bathroom again. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to pause for just a moment and just take some deep breaths here while I get things ready to go for you to get up. You're doing great. So good. All right. So we're back at the table with Asha. I have connection with Asha again. Thank you. Okay, so she has been abducted, as you said, and she's on that table, and you're working with her to make those alignments proper for her to do the work that she's here to do. And what else happens for her while she's in that room? There is a chance for her to reconnect with soul family that... She does not necessarily have a visual, physical memory, but a, a heart feeling of being supported. And that is part of what led her to the next level of her awakening. Okay. And tell her more about that next level of her awakening. There was a need that continued to grow in her to learn more about what was happening on the planet. It was an awakening to the assignment that she had to come here. She had started to have knowings of things that should be, but in having this experience and having that soul recognition of others in her star, her star family, her soul family, her tribe. It allowed the conscious human experience to align with waking up to those deeper truths in your human world that she came to help energetically dismantle and create new energetic structures for the transformation that needed to take place on this planet to proceed. So are you referring to the energy grids that you had mentioned earlier? Yes, but any structure that happens on your planet, whether it is a governmental system or any sort of group control interaction system all has an energetic structure before it comes into the physical, before humans or beings on your planet align into that structure. Mm -hmm. And so by adjusting the frequency, it is able to slowly dismantle, dissolve those structures as if, as an example we give, the sound frequencies, if you attach them to sand and you have a specific resonance, it will create a pattern. As you slowly adjust that pattern, it will change what that frequency output creates. And so by adjusting the frequency, we come in a way that is non-invasive to realign those structures in your planetary system in a way that will not be so disruptive like an, a, what do you call them? A wrecking ball crashing into a house. Instead, this is more of an organic dismantling. Okay. So it is not so emotionally damaging to your collective. Oh, nice. Okay. All right, very good. Um, she has some several 
um, missing time episodes. Um, were you a part of all of them or just this one? No, but we have awareness of all of them. You have awareness. Okay. And her questions that she has, um, can I ask you that or is it yes. better to go to the higher self? Both. Both? We can bring both in at the same time? Yes. Okay. All right. So on that occasion that we were talking about just now where she was on the ship, on the table, um, is there more to that experience that you want her to know about before she came back into her body? Um, he's, he's showing me like a, a regret that there was a physical pain right? and that the disorientation now because of that, I'm so much more sensitive to things like Wi-Fi because it amplified my ability to sense energy and disharmonious energy. Okay. I am so much more affected by the disharmonic human energy structures. Sure. Okay. Well, and she recalls um, hearing as she was coming out of that experience, the words, we are just finishing up. What was happening from your perspective for her as she was hearing those words? That was a the human mind interpreting what was happening. Because the human mind at that point would not have been able to connect the energetic experience that was happening. And so her only understanding of surgery or medical procedures are going to manifest in an understanding in the brain in a way that is most aligned to her current incarnations experiences. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, is it okay if I go on with the rest of her questions? Yes. Okay. She wonders what happened and how did she get to the waiting room as a child? She remembers being in a waiting room uh, as a little one. That is all, that is government interference. The, those, most of our incarnates are all targeted by your governmental systems. They have the technology based on the alliances that they've made with other lower fourth density collectives that have been a part of the hijacking and um, inverted matrix of Gaia. And so she was one of the star seeds placed in this family. And that was expected that she would be um, utilized in certain programs that allows us to have a, a an individuals inside the deepest levels of these organizations in a way that in many ways they cannot detect our our infiltrators so would you call her one of your infiltrators yes but but that i guess is a more aggressive human word um she is she is a volunteer she knew that some of the things that she would be in human words enduring would be unwell, uncomfortable. Um, and so she is strong. And so she chose to experience those things with consent. Okay. And so what specifically happened when she was in that waiting room? That was them taking her to begin the fracturing process of induction into programs. There are facilities that were connected to he he's showing me it's like I, I see that but then 
He's also bringing me back to the daycare that I was taken to. Okay. So there's some sort of connection between that and the daycare I went to. Okay. And so that fracturing experience that she had, on some level her soul was aware that this was going to happen as she came in as a volunteer to do this work? Yeah. Okay. And um, the programs that you mentioned, would these be programs that she's familiar with or not? Um, she That is where her soul knowing of knowing that there should be, like the the human experience, she remembers there being uh, completely wireless electronic like technology where there are no plugs. Everything has um, the ability to be charged wirelessly um, and knowing that healing should be far more instantaneous. There, she spent a lot of time up on a ship. Um, in these programs? Yes, using her psychic abilities. There, there are other more negative things that are not going to be as beneficial, but there are, there were certain points in time where she had a quote, more comfortable experience in the programs. And what were those times like for her? Those were more, um, she had the ability to engage in technology that used uh, psychic linking. So for her, the sense, uh, when, when she had first held a tablet, the knowing that she should be able to communicate with that telepathically. And so um, the, the ability to telepathically interact with other beings and technology was something that she found uh, a sense of ease and uh, an accelerated ability that gave her a sense of great accomplishment. Would it be beneficial for her to know what program she was a part of? I'm going to talk as me. I don't want to know. Okay. No worries at all. Let yourself just go back in. You're doing great. Um, she wants to know what happened during the 15 minutes of missing time that she had in as an adult. She very specifically knows it was 15 minutes because she was watching a show that she could rewind back to the point where she remembered watching it before. What happened during that period of missing time for her? I, I don't want to know. Don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> All right. No worries. Just take some nice deep breaths. With each breath you take, you're just letting yourself go deeper and deeper. To this beautiful, peaceful state of relaxation. And we're asking for the high self or Usha, whoever is best, Asha, whoever is best to answer these questions for her to come forth. Um, she's curious about what happened to her when she was getting acupuncture and was moved at least five inches on the table and suddenly had a shoulder injury. That was an accident. That was the same being as the one that came in to give the exam. He is young, he is learning. There, there was not an appropriate time to rectify what had happened there. It's like, he's showing me that to adjust at the timelines would have been pushed in a different direction that wouldn't have been beneficial. 
So the injury was allowed to be sustained. Oh, goodness. Okay. What else was happening to her for her during that that experience where she was moved on the table? She was actually taken for multiple weeks. That was an extended. There was, they're showing me re like something to do with my reproductive health. Um, he's showing me my ovaries. There's, but putting me back, I was put back in the wrong spot. But why, okay, so I was up on a ship for an extended period of time. He's saying three to five weeks, but our, the way they measure time on the ship is different from how I would measure time. So when the, your acupuncturist came back into the room and it had been a few minutes, but in that other timeline, it had been several weeks. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah. At the point of, I, I was put back in a split second, but the amount of time that I would have been gone. Okay. So the place that I went because of the density that they're in, they're in the no time density. So in higher, higher densities, there isn't the passage of time in the way that we experience it. So a lot of the programs and things like that take place in, as an example, the fourth density where everything is all at once in that moment. So that is how they are able to manipulate things and put people back, take people for programs and do things because they're existing in a somewhat non-comporeal way, but also in a, in a, in a energetic frequency that allows them to, uh, I guess, interject things into our timelines. Okay. Wow. And the, the acupuncturist felt that a very um, heavy energy almost made her feel nauseous. What was she picking up on in that room? Just the intense amount of energy that takes place when you are holding multiple different dimensionalities in a singular space, mm -hmm. it can become very disorienting. And so the intensity of that can cause things like disorientation, nausea, and um, just a, a sense of anxiety because of the intensity of so much energy being held in a, a single space. So frequently what was happening and when she experiences the things that she does, there are multi-dimensional layers happening in a singular space. And so we can energetically be there with our ship and also to you, it will just seem like the third dimension. And because of that melding of dimensional space, it can become when you are in tune with the different frequencies, it can become very energetically congested. Interesting. Okay. So felt differently by both of them? Yes. Okay. And then, um, at the next acupuncture session or, or one within a few from that. That was the same. That was, we would call an acolyte. He was making sure he did no further damage besides the shoulder. Okay. So it was the first one that had come in. Yes. Coming back to check on her. Yes. She was curious why the shoulder then didn't get repaired since it shouldn't have happened to begin with. Because as stated, the timeline to readjust things would have shifted the frequency of the timeline signature that she was on and would have adjusted things in a way that was beneficial. We would call it an acceptable uh, mistake. 
it was not, we could see that it would be resolved and resolved in a way that would be beneficial. And so it was allowed to re remain in her physicality. All right. Now, interestingly, that acupuncturist witnessed some very interesting things of her changing movement on the table obviously shouldn't have occurred or she'd see the the sheets move around um, while while her body was being worked on um, is there a reason why that was shown visible to the acupuncturist i wonder is that is she connected in some way uh that is it it is just she is in tuned with higher dimensional things and so one, it is a way to validate the experience, mm -hmm. but also she is more sensitive and aware of those energies anyway. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. And she did experience this next question, but in case you have more information to give her on it, she says um, when she gets spiraled back into her body in those periods of missing time. That is just frequency adjustment. That is just her... <laughs> As we realign her to her 3D physical structure, it is just a disorienting process of shifting from a higher dimensional frequency back down in. So it is a spiraling, and then as she settles back into her body, the discharge of energy mm -hmm. creates a shaking sensation. Okay. That's not an uncommon earth experience where people are asleep and feel like they're dropping back in their body. Is that a similar experience people have that they're... Yep, it is just <clears throat> when you are sleeping or astral project, you are shifting the core structure of your consciousness out of your body. And it is like a, a retractable cord you are all of a sudden pulled onto that tether and you get somewhat slingshocked back into that physical vessel. Mm -hmm. And so because when you move through the quantum field, it is a very different experience, you would experience it fast. So as you connect back into that physical body, your consciousness could be light years away. And so as you return back into physical sensation and relation to those physical experiences as to how your consciousness perceives things, it creates a sense of falling or spiraling or disorientation. Okay, thank you for that. <clears throat> she had noticed in her um, early to mid-20s that she had a physical pink rod that stuck out of her belly button. That um, is just what was tracking. It? Oh my goodness. So how did it get there to begin with? That was something that we did not add, that that was something from uh, a remnant from the programs. The cold laser technology that her practitioner utilized basically disintegrated the energetic structure. And so as a result, the physical structure uh, dissolved, resolved and healed. So that wasn't implemented by her soul family, like no. the mantis being that was from the programs on earth. Yes. Okay. And why did they want to track her? That was breeding programs through lower fourth density alliances within those governmental um, fra factions. Okay, very good. Thank you for that. She wonders what areas of healing does she need to focus on that she c currently can't see? Self-forgiveness. Much of her resistance in healing is a lack of belief that she deserves to heal. Being a part of some of the earth structures that created negative involvement also created a lack of self-worth and self-doubt. And while those things are not part of her conscious mind, they are 
fragmental energetic structures that are it is like malignant energy that needs to be dissolved and released and is created by that subconscious emotion so by going into the energy body and working through and letting go of those feelings of guilt or unworthiness. She also incarnated into a family that has, uh, that is Roman Catholic. And so the, the governmental structures were able to even further utilize those feelings of guilt and needing to appease. And so by addressing the need for self-care, self-love, and letting go of those negative feelings of undeservedness, she will move into a more aligned state to allow for healing to more synchronistically and naturally occur. And so she mentions um, her foot, that she feels that she's struggling to heal her foot, and wants to know what her limiting beliefs are on that. Can you take a look at that foot and see what is going on? There is a fear, and part of this has to do with her weight. As she loses weight, there is a lot of fear that comes about because of being seen in a, some people would say a positive light as far as sexual attraction or attention, but that creates a feeling of lack of safety. And so she will continue to struggle with her weight and have alignments to things that restrict her ability to do things to be in more of a state of alignment of weight loss until she resolves her fear around um, feeling preyed upon by, I guess we would best describe it as sexual or sexual attraction or um, attention that, that feels like a taking. Her energetic sensor sensations of when someone looks at her in a way that is appraising feels very much like a taking because that was part of what was manufactured and used to siphon energy in the programs. There's a lot of underlying structure that again goes back to things that they did. So resolving her feelings of safety and uh, figuring out how to feel protected in her energy um, are going to be key in order to resolve that. And so how does she best do that? by being in her sovereignty and realizing that in where she is in her current timeline, she has the ability to make her own decisions and in trusting that as she always uses for her mantra, she is always in the right place at the right time. The universe divinely guides and protects her and everything turns out better than she can imagine. <laughs> Those are beautiful mantras. <laughs> okay. And so now that she understands that, what are you doing to help heal that foot for her? Bringing her back to that point in time when she was a small child, when she was first taken and made to feel not safe. We are going to connect in and I am going to hold her hand and be with her through all of the experiences that she had. And knowing that you were supported by a full team the whole time that you were in any and all of those experiences and in those programs, that we were always there monitoring you and supporting you and reminding you 
in a subconscious, heart-centered, unobtrusive way that you were a strong individual that came in to infiltrate those systems and know that you have always been safe, that physical safety is in many ways an illusion and understanding that the soul is unbreakable in its entirety and that even if you were to have physical harm come to this physical vessel that you will never not be safe because we're all part of source and everything is source we wonder sometimes why there has to be programs like that that torture or wound a child and you're saying you're always there and supporting her, but how do you how do you rectify those two, I wonder? There is it is we frequently give her the example of the tree. And we see above ground taking in the beautiful light and all of these little leaves as souls. We will give the example. And eventually those those leaves, those souls fall and die and dissolve and break down and become part of the earth and the root structure system feeds on darkness and decay. And what we view or what the human collective views as evil is simply the shadow coin side of the entirety of the lower six dimensions. So in six dimensions, the one through six, there is a, a chance to experience duality. And so in order to experience the full totality of all that is you experience both the light and the dark you cannot be the tree by only being the leaves and the branches above if you did not have the root system you would lose out on all of the nutrients that what is darkness and decay to some people but is really just a recycling of of that energy and so it is really just a very efficient system that from your personal perspective is hard to understand and rectify because of how emotionally complicated the human existence is okay. understood thank you for that analogy that's beautiful all right um I think we've addressed this, but in case there's more information for her, she wonders what is the root cause of her struggles with her weight? Uh, it is the fear. It is the fear. If she, she has already cleared all ancestral ties. It is, if she can let go of the fear, then it will, she will let go of that physical barrier that she has created. Wow. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, how can she best serve the collective? By continuing to do the work that she does, by knowing that by following her joy and listening to the soul knowings of alignment, that she will continue to keep her vibrational frequency uh, high and aligned and through energetic resonance affect all of those who are in her karmic surround it she has the ability to affect anyone and everybody that she passes by but there is a frequency for specific people that she has we digress um, she is doing what she is meant to do and she is in alignment Okay. All right. Um, 
She wonders, does she have erased memories and does it serve her to retrieve them? There are many memories that she does not have that she is in agreement with her, her higher self that she does not want. And if at some point down the road it would be beneficial in understanding, then that conversation will happen with the higher self and together we will in a most succinct and gentle way, allow those to come forward. All right, perfect. Always in her highest and best good, right? Yes. Okay. Would it be all right with you if we moved on to the group questions that we had prepared? Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Um, first off, do you have any information that you could share with us about the comet? The comet? Mm -hmm. The comet that's in this is it our system right now? Uh, that is not something that we currently are. I, I am, I am a, a scientist. I am involved with the structures that are happening on this planet. Um, there are those who are in contact with that. That would be a different department on this ship. And so I, I do not have connection or awareness of that which you speak. Okay. No worries. And whoever, if you can bring forth anybody, the high self, um, the others on the ship, anybody that can answer questions we, is great. Or if it went, uh, there's somebody else who is saying that it is not a comment, that it is a ship. Oh, oh, tell us that, um, I just see a black, they're just showing me a black ship. Is it, um, uh, a good thing or a not good thing? Uh, it is just a, it does not feel negative. It just feels like acknowledgement of another collective mm -hmm. in their vessel. Uh, it, it would be like you pointing out a bus. It is just, it is large. Um, but it is just simply a type of a vessel. Very good. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Um, just look through here. What will the light workers need to be ready to do in this year of 2023? Understand one of your main purposes is that you are energetic first responders. So having understanding and compassion as, as we spoke about earlier, the dissolving of structures, there is so much dissolving in the world right now and that fragmented energy creates more chaos, tension, anxiety for those who are not aligned to the higher dimensional frequencies and understand what is causing the shifting on the planet. And so holding compassion, um, keeping, keeping out of the division Right now, those frequency, th those collectives within your earth collective that do not want the dissolving of it are trying to intentionally sow fear, division to alter that energetic structure. So be very conscious of caring for your, for yourself. Be very conscious of maintaining your own frequency. Understand that being in nature aligns you most with the organic true stu structure of Gaia and the non-corrupted matrix that is organic to this earth body. And so being in that structure and channeling that energy of nature will help align you and keep you grounded in your mission here. But just understand that there's going to be a lot of dissolving happening both in the larger structures as well as the lives of those of the individuals who are not aware. And so, Again, you're, you're energetic first responders. So just knowing that you are here to help care for and have compassion for those who don't understand what's going on. 
Thank you for that. Do you have information about um, Tiamat and Mars? Um, was there a great war between the star nations? Yes, that was a, a very long time ago. Um, it, we feel great sadness. There's, there's so much sadness and loss of life, of progress, of the energetic structure that had been created in this solar system. And it, there were, there was a great divide that took place and that is part of the reason why this part of the galaxy has somewhat been under a, I guess, quarantine is what you would have called it in the past. Um, we just, there's so much sadness. And so our ability to come in and help this, um, at this time with these frequencies in a way is our, the best way we could describe it is when you do something in solidarity for those who have passed, it is a chance to acknowledge and rectify some of that destruction energy that was left in the solar system from those, those battles. Okay. Thank you. All right. We would like to know what is really going on in Antarctica. There are many things in many places in Antarctica. There are ancient, ancient structures, uh, from you would refer to as the ancient builder races that have technology that has been buried there that your human collectives have found. There are let's see. Okay, they're just kind of floating me around to a bunch of different stuff. There I there's a lot of activity happening. Are there civilizations? In those, in both the North and the South Poles? Yes, but everything is underground. Mm -hmm. um, there, before the polar shifts, there were larger collectives that were there. And then there was a knowing that things would shift. And so there's a great amount under the surface. There are positive entities and energies there that are currently awakening because of the shift that is happening on the planet. Um, what do you mean currently awakening? So because of the, sh the shift in vibration, there are certain things in those locations that need to be a correct vibrational match to come online. And because of all of the light workers that have incarnated on this planet and slowly raised the frequency along with Gaia herself raising it, the energy coming from the central sun through our sun, those facilities are becoming part of the light and are no longer able to be utilized or hijacked in the way they have previously been in previous decades. So there are negative factions still down there, but with this raise in frequency, when you are aligned with the third dimension and lower fourth dimension, when you have technologies of a higher vibrational density, they can only use them to a certain degree. And at a certain point when it exceeds their capacity, then those of a higher vibration, excuse me, higher vibrational frequency are able to step in and utilize that power. And basically when you have an enemy who takes over something and they have the perception that it is theirs, when in reality they have now 
put all of their deepest secrets inside your safety vault. Oh, interesting. And do you see a pull shift actually happening? And if so, how will it affect all of us? There, the earth will always continue to shift poles. It is accelerating. It is hard to give specifics on that because the way in which the earth is accelerating in frequency creates a jumping of timelines. And so to try and predict what that outcome would be would be irresponsible because of how much shifting is taking place. Our recommendation for those who hold this subject in fear is to realize again, as referenced in earlier in the session, the soul is always safe. Your journey in your physical vessel at some point will end. And if it were to end abruptly, understand that your higher self and your soul team will make it as easy of a transfer back into spirit as possible. We are not saying that there is an imminent end. It's just understand that by being in a place of fear, it does not serve you. It does not serve your, your energy body. And so trust that whatever is going to best happen for the collective will and things that you perceive in a physical way is not always an accurate depiction of what is happening energetically. And we are struggling for words as to how to create an understanding of we'll just say that there, you do not need to have fear around this. The, if you put fear into this, then that is just anchoring yourself into a timeline where fear and disaster happen. Okay. Well, then that kind of goes into another question someone has about, um, are we going to experience a mass depopulation or is that um, just fear possibilities that are being put out? There are multiple things happening right now. There are a number of beings incarnated on the planet that have been moving up through the first, second, and third dimension who are not ready to be done with the third dimension. And so a number of those individuals that we see currently leaving the planet or have left the planet in the last handful of years and will come for probably the next 10 years or so is simply a organic shifting of those souls into a time space continuum density planetary alignment that will allow their soul structure to continue right now because of the dissolving of those structures on your planet, there are some that it would just not be beneficial for them to navigate these times. Are, we are here. Your journey is about soul growth and acceleration. It. Many of you came in to help. That's why there are so many people on the planet at this time. But there are many. It, it is like a, a switching of places. There are those that are coming in and those that are leaving. Um, yes, there is a part of this that is negative in appearance, but again, it is like when we look at the tree and the root structure and how the roots feed on darkness and decay, sometimes the light, so that beautiful tree above is in a way feeding on the dark to help sustain itself. So it is, it is simply a cyclical cycle in order to sustain the growth of the soul and the evolution of the universe. Oh, beautiful. So really, again, we can let go of fear. Yes. 
Fear does not serve you. Fear, fears should only be used in a physical context of immediate danger. Okay. The nervous system on your planet has become so hypercharged by all of the, you would call it fear porn, that you have been indoctrinated into a system of fear. Let go of fear because fear generally has you outside of the present moment. Be in the present moment. If fear arises in the present moment because of a situation that you are physically in, then utilize that fear because that is what it is there for. But let go of fear that is attached to potential future events. It does not serve you. It simply hijacks your energy and your timeline. Beautiful. Thank you for that. That's very powerful. Um, Will Atlantis and any other underground cities be discovered in our lifetime? And if so, what effects will it have on humans, good or bad? That is a, more of a dimensional um, discrepancy. So it has never not been there. It is just you are not a vibrational match at this time. There is a dissolving of its frequency match to this planetary structure at this time. There is a potential for realignment, but right now that would not... They're showing me that there is a lack of... It, it would not benefit us that there are those who watch the downfall of Atlantis when much of what is happening now happened in Atlantis. And so many of you who are drawn to Atlantis and what happened there uh, were, were pre-scientists, uh, energy workers that watched things uh, dissolve and be destroyed. And so um, the realignment with that at this time with all of the chaotic placement of greed within the scientific and um, the, the, the structures that you have, it, it would... It would be misaligned right now. So we we will not say that there it is not a possibility, but right now it would not serve your collective to have that contact or um, to reconnect with that. Okay, very good. Well, then um, speaking about the collective, what is the collective consciousness theme of twenty twenty three? Healing division. Healing division. Nice. Right now, there is such a an intentional fracturing of the energies. Their their only way, because they know that their systems are dissolving, they're basically just trying to create as much chaos as possible and feed fear and being able to move out of that space of having to be right or, or knowing what is happening because as a reminder, nobody knows everything that is happening. Anybody who says that they know the whole true story is stuck behind their blind spots. And so understanding that the division that is happening on our world is being reflected into your smaller communities as well. The, the division does not serve. Understand that you are all equally important and each have a different perspective that nobody else has. And so by uniting and coming together, we, we hold the most cohesive and the strongest energy structure for the planet in that. So be kind, be compassionate, try to heal the division, hold energy for those who know not what they do in their 
divisive and derisive behaviors and know that we are all one. Mm -hmm. We are all one. All right. Thank you so much for that. We want to know who created the void, how was it created, and why? The Are you speaking of the void of space, or are you speaking of the negative... Um, the negative, I get, I guess the absence of all that is. Oh, interesting. Well, I'm not quite sure what she's asking about specifically there. Why don't we go with, we'll go with both. Uh, space in your 3d experience, the outer space, as you would call it, is simply there, there is much there that you cannot see. Really, everything is completely full. Um, it's just on a different dimensional frequency. If you were to turn the radio dial, you would come in contact with many different radio stations, but your radio does not move. It is still in the same place. It is just experiencing a different frequency with that movement. And so outer space is really just space that is filled with different frequencies of energy. The void is simply the, when there is a, when there is all that there is, there's also a lack of all that there is so that it can experience the duality of both. With everything, it, it is how the source, source consciousness moved up through dimension in experiencing itself by not experiencing itself and that was the root of duality. That was, that was the start point of all and nothing. And the negative, um, the, the second portion that you brought up there, is there more you want to share about that? What specifically would you like to know? Um, well, we were talking about you had two aspects of the void that you had. The, just simply that some people it is in negative and positive. So like there's a, a positive charge and a negative charge. And so the negative is just simply the duality of the positive charge. So a void, an absence, a lack is the opposite of all the, all that is, uh, all energy combined into a singularity. So it is just as in zeros and ones. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. This next question deals with parallel lives and asks, can we have the same challenges and experiences in parallel lives at the exact same time? Yes. So we will share with you the example that we gave Diana in explaining what a soul looks like. We like to use the example of a tree because it is a natural toroidal shape and it is easy to explain the growth on a tree with branches. And when you have those individual lives, we will look at them as leaves. Each leaf is connected to a branch and each branch has multiple little little branches that extend onto leaves. And so if you have all of those leaves clustered in an area, many, many of those lives that you are experiencing in that portion of your soul are going to be affected by the other ones. So when you see something happen on a tree, as an example, when there is rot or decay or disease, it tends to affect an entire area, maybe an entire branch, an entire portion of that tree. And so just like with the soul and the other lives that we are experiencing, if there is something happening in a specific life, it does affect those around them. Okay, very good. Um, and how do we break the patterns we do not want and if we do this in one life, does it impact the other parallel life? Yes. Many of the things, 
Wait, please, please rephrase that question or please say that again. Sure, sure. How do we break the patterns we do not want in yes. the life that we're focused on? And that is we... enough. That is enough. Okay. To, to break the patterns, first, when you say break a pattern, you're in resistance. Being aware that you are in resistance is going to keep you circling back into that as you progress through your timeline. And so by identifying the root of your resistance, it will help you dissolve that which is holding you tied to that set of karmic experiences. Once you can resolve the root of that resistance, that will no longer reoccur in your timeline because everything that happens, happens for you, not to you. Right, right, okay. So this is a different person asking a question, but I think it kind of lines up in case there's more information. She says, do humans have the ability and free will to change their contract and timelines while living out their current contract? So that seems like a conflicting question because it sounds like they're wanting to continue on the current. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes. Um, okay, so let's break it down. Do humans have the ability and free will to change their contract? Always. Okay. It's, again, you have to become aware. You need to look at where you are in resistance and potentially why you created that karmic contract. You can always intend with the help of your higher self and your team to dissolve that. But on a subconscious level, you may choose to not fully dissolve it because there is a benefit to that, that unless you experience that, you cannot resolve. Many of the things that we experience as negative on the, the earth, as an earth incarnation, is simply a way to resolve patterns of behavior that you have not previously been able to resolve by coming into a space that goes through a veil of forgetting you allow yourself to enter in in an unbiased state so that you can more organically move through something without any sort of preconceived notion of how you should do that. And so it is, it is sometimes beneficial to ask the higher self to help you release that. Perhaps it will bring something into your awareness that ultimately allows you to let go of that and fully integrate what the intention of that karmic contract was. But sometimes if you are finding that it, it is not resolving and you cannot let it go, it is simply because you're in resistance. Again, resistance is one of the greatest stumbling blocks of navigating the human, the human experience. really is an opportunity for growth too, isn't it? A hundred percent. That is, that is why you come, you come to the school of earth. It is, it is your soul college to learn your lessons. And sometimes you plan things in a way with your higher self and your soul team so that you cannot not learn the lesson. Okay. Well then that leads into another question about, um, they asked, please help us all to learn why so many people are not able to see through the many deceptions. They're not meant to. You forget that you come from a higher dimensional plane where you have been through other planets and timelines and experiences. And because you come in with a different awareness, you have the ability to see things that do not resonate correctly. Many of these individuals are still just moving up from the first, second, third. And so they don't have the ability to have that awareness and they're not meant to. It's, it's again, these are teaching tools. You come to the school of earth to learn and you sometimes like exciting lessons. What many people, we will give you the example. There are many of you that enjoy horror movies. You do not necessarily want something negative to happen in your current incarnation, but for some reason you enjoy being scared. And because the school of earth is a place to learn, it is also a place to experience. Coming through that veil of forgetting is like 
incarnating into a real life movie that you have planned ahead or, or an interactive, you guys like video games. So it is like an interactive video game where you get to experience all kinds of things. And so understand that when you are on, when you are in higher states of consciousness where we are all collectively one, there is no surprise. There is no there is no division, there is no, there, there isn't the diversity of emotion and experience. And so whether you can fully understand this or not, you come in for some of those really disruptive experiences. Well, interesting then, because one wants to know how will the transhuman agenda play out? That should not play out. That is, that is a corrupted timeline that many of you came in to hold energy to dissolve. So if you would like to actively do something to help dissolve it, it would just be connecting to that part of self that knows that we have the ability to transcend the need for AI, mm -hmm. that that is a inorganic reproduction of organic energetic geometric structures and <clears throat> technology can never replicate itself in a high enough form to actually replicate true consciousness that is what ai is attempting to do it is trying to create divine consciousness that's not possible so ultimately there are limitations to that ai so while there may be some that travel that the reality is is it can never reach above the lower fourth density so if you focus your energies on you know we would recommend the fifth or higher then that becomes less of an energetic match for your planet so fo fo so focus on higher states of energetic consciousness okay perfect thank you for that and then focusing on that higher way of being um do you have advice for those that are aware that they're elevating them their frequencies and and um vibrations to grow with that a little bit easier or um quicker i guess I'm, I'm sorry, can you please restate the question? For those that are aware that of their frequency and their vibration and what's going on energetically, do you have advice for the, for them to help assist their own growth? So again, we will bring you back to becoming aware of where you are resistant. Um, that is a definitely a trap for the the physical incarnation. So the less that you are in resistance, the more flow you are in. So being aware of resistance and then also being more in the present moment. So the, the zero point takes place only in the present moment. The perception of time, all of that is a illusion, we will say. And being able to be as firmly in the, the here and now allows you to have the most effective ability to manifest. And by releasing any resistance you have, um, and that, okay, they just like, there was a whole bunch of stuff flashing and I'm having to use the bathroom again just because of the sheer amount of energy going through me. Okay, no worries. All right, just stay put for just a second. We're just going to pause everything here. We are present. All right, ready to go, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, just a few more questions. Thank you so much. This is so much fun. All right. Um... <laughs> Will the school systems around the world ever change? Um, they seem quite dated and obsolete. Yes, there are many of you that came in to overhaul the school systems. That's why 
so many, including this physical vessel, struggled um, in them because being from high density uh, planes, you are very used to learning in a very um, cohesive, um, we struggle with the, the words that are, that will translate into your language. Um, they, it's like they're showing it, it what they teach. Okay. We, we will just simply answer the question more directly. Uh, yes, there are many of you here holding a frequency to shift that, but it is not going to change in the way that many people expect the structures of school, the school systems through the school systems themselves to change. It will be a building of an alternative. It is like switching timelines. So there are many of you that are building a new school structure timeline that people will eventually shift onto. So it is alternate systems. The Many of the systems you have on your planet that are, quote, broken cannot be fixed within and of themselves. It is just simply an allowing of them to dissolve while we support those who have come in to create new structures. Perfect. Okay. Do you think that is um, part of the great purpose of these last few years and all the... Yes, the dismantling. It's, it's, it, it, it's more of a resulting of the dismantling of those energies. So one of the other examples, we love to give this physical vessel as far as understanding of how energy affects the physicality is a 3D printer. You can have something printing out and keep changing that individual thing that prints out to fix it into the way that you think you would like it. However, it will not stop it will not stop it from printing exactly what that program says to print it. And so by dissolving the structure or changing the blueprint that is how things change. So you cannot expect an existing structure to change. You basically have to energetically change it. So what is happening is that breakdown of frequency, that changing of frequency is resulting in the chaotic structures that we're witnessing on the planet. So while many of you view the negative things that we're seeing as like dark and bad, Really, it is simply the outcome of energetic shifts. So it is an understanding that there is great change that has taken place on the energetic level. And it has no choice but to manifest in a physical way. And so really take heart when you see these, the, this chaos and distress in the world. It is really just a shifting and changing of the structure. So th this is all, it is, it is good that you are seeing so much chaos because if the energetic structures that surrounded your planet had not changed, you would not see any of those structures uh, dissolving. Right. We're just kind of in the middle of it right now. It sounds yep. like, right? Hard yep. We, we, you are having to live through an entire, it is, it is if you have to, Demolish a house and rebuild it, but you still have to live in the house. Okay, well, that's a really good analogy. I love that. Okay. Um, one asks, is the event or solar flash close? Again, that is like the pole shift. It is very hard because there are, there are many things taking place energetically that are just like how your physical body and your different systems work as an example, um, having to go to the bathroom, you, it is a whole process in your body from ingesting food to breaking it down, to absorbing the nutrients, to letting it go. There are certain things that are going to happen based on 
what is happening with your central sun, that energy through the solar sun and where you're moving in the, in the universe. Mm -hmm. And if you focus on potential negative outcomes that does not serve you, again, remember that you are always safe, that if you physically experience something, that that is something one, if you are focusing on it, you are drawing that timeline closer to you. But also, as the example with going to see a scary movie, you may have decided to incarnate into a timeline where you wish to have a, a very interesting event take place. But we would say, again, you're, you're moving outside of the, the, the now moment. The more you do that, the the less aligned you are when you go out into nature and you watch nature there is no there's no anything besides the wind blowing through the trees in that exact moment so try not to get caught up in the potential of things the the planets the suns the galaxy are all like your own personal body. There is a ebb and a flow and things will happen exactly when they're meant to happen. Perfect. So as far as like a total earth catastrophe, um, huge changes like that, do you see anything like that? Or is it just... Again, it's for the soul to view something like that. It is... There, there is no answer that we could give that would appease. Mm -hmm. It would either induce fear or create a anchoring in of a specific timeline that does not serve your collective. So, so again, we say when you are worried about solar flashes or pole shifts, when when you have a desire to know, it is a desire out of fear of outcome. So what I would then ask you, what do you gain from that? Okay, very good. And um, are we meant to help others awaken? Those that are meant to awaken are your other, are, are the others that came in with you. The awakening is about awakening each other that came here for your purpose. It is not about trying to awaken those that are still in the process of moving through the third dimension. That was never what the awakening is. It is a remembering of your soul mission, of your soul purpose. It is awakening to the missions and the journey that you came here for. Perfect, okay. We know that the sun is an excellent source of healing for humans. We wonder, is there a close second best way to heal like red light, infrared, full spectrum red light? Hmm. They're, they're, they're showing me more than light that the earth, the grounding energy of the planet itself. Um, the, the combination of being in sunlight and having your feet, your bare feet on the ground um, is going to be, uh, it is like the tree. You get the energy from the sun, but then you have the balance of the energy on the earth and its frequencies. So it is the most harmonic combination of beneficial energies. Perfect. Thank you for that. Do we really have junk DNA or are humans told <laughs> that to prevent us from activating a God-given gift? Is source junk? No. <laughs> Everything is source. There can be no junk DNA. It is simply a egoic perception of that which is not understood. There can be no such thing as junk DNA. Okay. I love that. Okay, um, will the U.S. and I guess the world need to go through a near-death experience to awaken the majority? Um, it, that is a question in fear, and that is a misunderstanding of awakening. Again, awakening is about those who came to realign 
the structures of the planet. Mm -hmm. And so just the perceiving of that scenario is one based in fear. So we, we don't quite know how to resolve your question because we feel that it is, it is disharmonious um, in nature. Okay. All right. Well, we'll just let that go then. Um, are all archangels actually incarnated on earth at this moment? That is a misinterpretation of their energy. They are multidimensional beings as you yourself are a multidimensional being. They have the ability to be anywhere and everywhere through the quantum field. So based on whatever resonance you are in alignment with, you can call them in, be connected to their energy field, but they are not incarnated in the sense of earthly incarnation, but they are capable of being anywhere always. Oh, interesting. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, <laughs> are there other intergalactic civilizations out there trying to help and support us? Uh, many. They're, they're, those in which we work with are 42, but there are many. There are a number of different collectives that have different um, roles, it, depending on what density you are part of, you would be connected to different types of energetic civilizations. And so there are many of you that have come in, have already experienced this type of restructuring of a fractured energy grid, um, and so you have gone through similar experiences like this in other star systems. So many of you who are coming in to do this have frankly done this many times before. And you are just, you know, coming in for another mission. Oh, interesting. You mentioned 42. Can you explain that, please? Uh, as, as, the, as, as a mantid being the group that I am a part of, we just simply happen to be in contact with 42 other um, groups. However, many of the civilizations groups are a collection of different multidimensional beings. It is, as humans, you have a hard time because you are used to it all being a human incarnation. Many of us in these higher dimensional existences interact with beings who are uh, incarnated in corporeal as well as non-corporeal forms. And so to give you a number, it is simply a number of specifically aligned groups for specific tasks or uh, orientation. And so there are hundreds of different energetic physical beings that are a part of this shifting. It is, as an example, a hospital. There are many different roles that are fulfilled in that. And so if you were to say nurses, you would not be able to describe, uh, not all nurses are the same physical incarnation. And so to try and individuate the beings, collectives, and structures become somewhat confusing because you can have two nurses who are very different individuals. So I guess we don't know how to further articulate the answer that you would like. Okay. Well, I think that's, that's very good. Thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. 
what is the best thing that an individual can do to assist the progress on the Earth Gaia today? You are looking to understand how to affect the collective timeline? Um, yeah, I think from, from the Earth's physical standpoint, how can we assist that part of, of Gaia? Let's see. Let me mesh with her. Being self-accountable and knowing that you are in charge of your own energy field and how that affects other people, but also there is a distortion of what this movement for um, things like the New Green Deal and things like that, that is, those are distorted ways of trying to help our planet. She is simply asking for us to be mindful in our impact of how we affect the other organic structures that are a part of her being. So things that impact her, her land and the other beautiful incarnated beings, the animals, the bugs, all of those things, the choices that you make on an individual level never allow somebody to tell you are not important. So the things that you can do from a truly sustainable way are important. Being connected, if you can plant your own garden, you are connecting with the earth in a way that creates an energetic frequency that far surpasses the broken structures, but what they are trying to emotionally manipulate people into doing. So just, just being self-aware in how you are energetically interacting, but then also understand that your individual choices are highly impactful. Um, so choose sustainability in a way that is heart centered and aligned with the well being of the planet and the creatures that you share this incarnation with. Okay. Is there anything <clears throat> that we didn't ask today that you would like to give more information about? You are loved. You are all loved. You, you are in a place right now that is so full of fear and it is hard sometimes when you are experiencing physicality and you watch all this chaos happening that you forget that you are infinite beings that this is a simple, a singular incarnation and that if we were to take a bucket of sand, this is simply a singular grain in that bucket of sand of all of those accumulative lifetimes that you have experienced and choosing to incarnate in the third dimension is one of the greatest challenges. It is a place of it is, as an example from your your TV, the um, the ninja warrior, uh, the the crazy obstacle courses. You have incarnated into a density and a planet and a timeline that is incredibly uh, challenging. Um, but you all came here because it provided a chance for you to grow and learn and to help uh, a collective. But a lot of you fall into the fear and forget that you are always supported and always loved, that all emotions are rooted in either fear and love and to be aware of what base frequency you are tuning into that all of your all of your decisions and purpose coming into this was created from a place of of love and a desire to help and learn and grow and so to try to release the fear of potential negative outcomes because again we remind you that those things can be catalysts that 
many of the things that you experience that your perspective is giving you as potentially negative are simply the the cohesive utilization of the energy of all that is there is a very beautiful energetic structure in how the universe recycles the energy that it creates again we will bring you back to the example of a tree each season the tree grows stretches to the light grows its leaves as big as they can just like we grow our lives and at the end of that season they are released to drop down to the earth to break down to be dissolved and all of those lessons that we learn all of that light that the tree used to grow go back into that soil to be absorbed into the roots and to continue another cycle of growth and so this is just one one of the many leaves of your soul tree that you are experiencing and any and all regardless of how your incarnation ends it is all beneficial and so try to stay out of fear try to choose love because when it comes down to it that is what source is source is love and remember that even when things seem dark that really everything is source darkness is just light that is so dense that it it becomes imperceivable so so let go of let go of your fear move into light remember that we are all one and that you came here by choice and that you are just as important as everybody else and be in your light be in your sovereignty and know that you are always supported oh that's beautiful thank you i mean this has been just such an exceptional day um thank you for taking the questions of my group and answering her questions so beautifully it's so greatly appreciated and um, is there anything that you want her to know from your perspective from her first session that we had in the very unique experience of that um, secret space program conference and the television show that she was filmed for? Uh, understanding, again, we will bring back to resistance, much of the unease that she felt was being in resistance and it gave her the understanding experience of how relaxing and letting go particularly of resistance allows you to more thoroughly and organically connect to your higher self and to those on your team and so it was just again an example of duality to know what does not serve you so you know what does serve you all right very good um anything else that you can think of that's important for her to know or um, well, let me stop there. Then I want one more question for her. I'm, I'm sorry. What was that? Anything else that you want her to know? Uh, I do not. I think that we have covered everything that would be beneficial at this point in time. Okay. And then, um, is there a way for her to stay connected to you if she wants to Asha or what is the best way? Now that she has connected to this energetic frequency, all she has to do is realign with it. Nice. And how will that help her moving forward in her life, I wonder? It will simply be another point of reference and guidance for when she has questions, particularly those of a more uh, energetically scientific nature. Okay, beautiful. Well, we are so grateful that you came through and answered her questions and, and the group's questions so well. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for this experience. Thank you. Do you have a final message that you would like to give to Diana before I bring her back up? As was shared, you are loved, you are light, be in peace, go forth and embrace this incarnation. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you.